Let's see about carcinoma of maxillary sinus. The carcinoma arises from the mucosa of the maxillary sinus. Initially, it presents with the symptoms of sinusitis. Later, it progresses to involve the bony destruction of the maxilla which further progresses to invade the surrounding structures. Now let's see the clinical features of carcinoma of maxillary sinus. The disease is more common in males and the age 40 to 60 years is more common for the development of carcinoma of maxillary sinus. The features, early features are nasal obstruction or stuffiness nasal discharge which is often blood stained and there can also be other symptoms like facial pain and epiphora so all these symptoms are similar to that of sinusitis so in early stages, the carcinoma of maxillary sinus can be mistaken for sinusitis. Next, coming to the late features. The late features include There are many late features depending on the direction of spread. and the extent of growth of the carcinoma of maxillary sinus. So based upon its spread, this is the maxillary sinus on either side. If the cancer spreads medially, it involves the nasal cavity and so it gives rise to nasal symptoms. So medially involves nasal cavity and produces nasal symptoms like nasal obstruction, discharge and epistaxis. Then anterior spread. Anteriorly it spreads to the cheek causing cheek swelling anteriorly causes cheek swelling if it extends inferiorly as in this picture it goes to the alveoli of the teeth so inferiorly it can spread to the alveolus of the teeth which causes dental pain loosening of teeth or any ulceration of the gingiva etc. So if it spreads superiorly superior spread invades the orbit as you can see from this picture the superior spread involves the orbital region. So this causes proptosis, diplopia that is double vision. There can be ocular pain and epiphora. 
that is excess watering from the eye. Next is the posterior spread. Posteriorly, it can spread into the pterygo maxillary fossa. So posterior spread is to the pterygo maxillary fossa. Pterygoid plates and also it can extend into the nasopharynx. Sphenoid sphenoid sinus and also the base of skull and there can also be intracranial spread intracranial spread can occur through these ethmoidal sinuses these are the ethmoidal sinuses through which there can be intracranial spread also, the lymphatic spread is more common. The regional nodes are enlarged, which are seen in late stages of the carcinoma of maxillary sinus. Nodal metastasis. Systemic metastasis are usually rare. So, in nodal metastasis, the submandibular and the upper jugular nodes are more commonly involved and the systemic metastasis are rare this is about the clinical features and the spread of carcinoma of maxillary sinus next coming to the diagnosis of the carcinoma of maxillary sinus the diagnosis involves radiography of the paranasal sinuses which shows opacity of the sinus with bony wall destruction which differentiates it from sinusitis. The other modes of diagnosis are CT scan. This is the best non-invasive method. Biopsy can also be taken for diagnosis. If there is any growth present in the nose or mouth etc. Next is the classification. The carcinoma of maxillary sinus can be classified in two ways. One is on Grin's classification. And the other is Liederman's classification. On Grenz and Liedermanns. And there is also one more classification which is AJCC classification. American Joint Committee on Cancer Classification. So this AJCC classification classifies carcinoma of maxillary sinus into well differentiated, moderately differentiated, and poorly differentiated three types and this is only for squamous cell carcinoma this is AJCC classification coming to the Ongren's classification this is based on the Ongren's line Ongren's line is nothing but an imaginary line which is drawn from the medial canthus of the eye to the angle of mandible.
So if this is the medial canthus of the eye and this is the angle of mandible, the line joining the medial canthus of the eye to the angle of mandible is called as the Ongren's line. This is the Ongren's line and the carcinomas which are above this line that is suprastructural have poor prognosis whereas the cancers below this Ongren's line have a better prognosis. This is Ongren's classification. Next the Liederman's classification. This Liederman's classification uses two horizontal lines one passing through the floor of orbit and the other through floor of the maxillary antrum. So these are the two lines one passing through the floor of orbit and the second passing through the floor of maxillary antrum. Here it divides it into three suprastructure, mesostructure and infrastructure. The suprastructure includes ethmoid, sphenoid and frontal sinuses. The mesostructure includes the actual maxillary sinus and the respiratory part of nose. And the infrastructure contains the alveolar processes. This is the classification of carcinoma of maxillary sinus. Next, coming to the treatment. The early stages, that is the stage 1 and 2 squamous cell carcinoma, which are considered to be early stages. Are treated with surgery. For this, the treatment of choice is surgery. Or radiotherapy is also found to be equally effective. So for stage 1 and 2 squamous cell carcinoma, that is early stages, the treatment of choice is surgery or radiotherapy, both giving equal results. Then T3 and T4 lesions, they are treated by radiotherapy combined with surgery. So here there is a combination of radiotherapy with surgery. Chemo radiation, that is chemo radiotherapy, is used for large inoperable tumors. So surgery can be cannot be performed for such type of tumors in which we do chemo radiation. This is all about the carcinoma of maxillary sinus. Thank you.